All right, boys and girls, welcome back to the welcome back to the drive through drive through for our first ever Kung Fu edition of a remix. So I already made this video, but I didn't uh, put any music to it or or audio to it, not music. Although maybe we should start adding audio and music. So I'm just gonna do a voiceover of the original video, and uh, that's what we're doing right now. I'm gonna try to put these things on top of each other so we don't seem so redundant. So what makes something a geometric sequence? Well, instead of, well, Carson knows this, what makes something a geometric sequence? You multiply. That's right. Instead of adding to get from one term to the next, you multiply to get from one term to the next. And I just now realize that it takes me a long time to write this. But let's look at what I wrote. To get from n to n plus 1, that's another way of saying to get from one term to the next term, okay? Let's think back. What is the explicit, the explicit formula for an arithmetic sequence or a linear y equals mx plus b? Or, if you want to find the nth term, it's the slope times, oh, that should be n plus b. That should be m times n plus b. Uh, so I screwed that up. So then, what is the explicit formula for a geometric sequence? It's y equals b times r to the x power. Sometimes you'll see that as b times r to the n power. What is b? It is still our y-intercept. Okay? r, in this case, is the rate. It's what you multiply to get from one term to the next term. And then x is just the number, like the, which term you want. So if you want the tenth term, then you put a 10 in for x. The b and the r will typically be numbers. The x and the y will be variables, just like you're used to for all other functions in algebra. Okay, so we're going to do a couple of these. I'm about ready to magically circle one of these. Let's see which one we're going to do first. We're going to do number two. It looks like, oh, no. Okay, determine if they're geometric, then find the ratio. Okay. So, we're going to do number one, it looks like. The first term is 3, the second term is 9, the third term is 27, the third, fourth term is 81. It looks to me like we are multiplying to get from one term to the next. What are we multiplying by? Three. Multiplying by 3. So, is it geometric? Yes, it is. What is our common ratio? 3. Okay, number 2. I see a pattern. Times 2, times 2, times 2. Is it geometric? Yes. What's the ratio? It's 2. Number 3. Oh, yeah, that's the ratio. I'm circling the ratio there. And number 1, the common ratio is 3. And number 2, the common ratio is 2. Let's look at number 3. First term is 4. Second term is 8. This is just like the last one. Not so fast, my friend. This one is arithmetic. We are adding not adding two? Come on, we're adding four, Mr. Yulin. Get a grip. It's pathetic. This guy stinks. All right, here we go. Find the tenth term of each geometric sequence. All right, so first we're going to do this the long way, it looks like. So we're just going to write out ten terms. We can do that. The first term in number ten is two, then it's four. It looks like we are multiplying 16, 32, 64, 128. 256, come on, come on, slowpoke, 256, 360, no, 512, that was totally wrong, 1024. So that's how we're going to do these. Um, pretty straightforward. They're only looking for the tenth one. But what if we wanted to uh, come up with a faster way to do this? Or what if they were asking for like the 30th term? Well, we would want to come up with an equation. What do we need to know for the equation? We need the y-intercept, and we need the r, the rate of multiplication. Well, how do we find the y-intercept? We put in a 0 for x. So you can see, pause the video, kung fu style. I put a 0 in for x, and then I just worked the pattern backwards and found that this number would be 1. So notice that our b is 1, our r is 2, and check out what we're going to get for y sub 10. 1 times 2 to the 10th, which is 1,024. Does that make sense? Okay. Let's see what we're going to do next here. I'm going to erase this so I can have a little bit more room. And then I'm going to click on my pen. 
and I'm going to do number 11 next. The first term is 1, the second term is 3. We know that it's a geometric sequence. The common ratio is 3. Ooh, the y-intercept is 1 third. So this is going to be y or a sub n equals 1 third times 3 to the x power. Okay. So those are the same things. I want you to know that. Those are the exact same things. So it's one-third times three to the n power. In this, we want the tenth term. So we're going to put 10 in for what number? We're going to put 10 in for n. And let's see what we get here. Three to the tenth. That's probably huge. And then divided by three. So really, it's three to the ninth is going to be the answer. Nineteen thousand six hundred and eighty-three. Okay, let's do one more from this page. Oh, oh no, let's just do this one over again because you can really do this either way. So if you wanted to, you could just one times three is three times three is nine times three is twenty-seven. Two forty-three, seven twenty-nine. Oh gosh, two thousand. 177? No, 87. Oh, I'm out. I'm multiplying in my head. I'm just going to watch the math go. And I bet you get 1,900 or 19,683. I don't think that's it yet. Although i got to be ready for this boom. We're only halfway done. All right. So find the missing term. So the first term is 4. The second term, we don't know what it is. The third term is 16. So I know we multiplied 4 times something, x, to get the question mark, and we multiplied that question mark times something, the same x, to get to 16. So 4 times x times x is 16. x times x is x squared. Divide each side by 4. x squared is 4. x must be 2. So that means our second term must be 8 or negative 8. That is called the geometric mean. You might remember that from Alex or from geometry. Okay, it's the geometric mean of four and sixteen is positive or negative two. No, no, no. The geometric mean would be positive or negative eight. I did not get the answer right for number twenty. Let me be clear about that. For number twenty, that should be an eight. R is two. So I need, didn't write the answer down. So let's, let's figure out what our R is in number 26. 625 times x times x is 25. This is going to be a fraction less than 1. 625x squared is 25. Divide each side by 25. I recommend leaving your answer as uh, a fraction. So you get x squared is 25 over 625. Uh-oh, which simplifies to um, 5 over, what's the square root of 625? 25, right? So x is a fifth, which means our middle term must be 125. Let me show you that again. I didn't write the answer down. This term is 125. The r is a fifth. 625 times a fifth is 25. Okay? Moving on. Speed it up, buddy. Remember, it could be positive or negative 125. Looks like I'm going to make some more room. I'll speed up the video. Oh, no, I go back and fix that. I go back and fix that. So the missing term in number 20 is plus or minus 8. Fixing my mistakes in life. One thing you uh, get good at when you make a lot of mistakes, you get good at fixing your mistakes, that's for sure. Okay? All right. Identify these as arithmetic, geometric, or neither. Then find the next two terms. I think we probably have two more examples. Number 32. Looks like we're multiplying by one-third each time. So the next term will be a ninth and then a twenty-seventh. Thirty-three. Oh, uh, let's see. I don't think so. 
add one, add, no, subtract one, subtract two, subtract three. That is neither. That actually might be quadratic. But I know the pattern. Next time we got to subtract four, and then the next time we got to subtract five. Number 34. Ooh, I like it. Believe it or not, this is geometric. What are we multiplying by to get from one term to the next term? By negative 1. And as long as we're multiplying by the same number each time, then it counts. Okay? Whoa, that was fast. An explicit formula for each sequence. So I've got to write these out. A sub 1 is 3. R is negative 2. So that means our second term would be negative 6. Our third term would be positive 12. Our fourth term would be negative 24. Let's find out what our b is. So divide by negative 2, and you get negative 1.5 for our b, or negative 3 halves. Those are the same thing. So for 38, our explicit sequence is a sub 1 is b times r to the n. So it's negative 3 halves times negative 2 to the n. One more, 39. Doing a lot of your homework for you, but this stuff is new, so that's no problem. Uh, the first term is 5, the r is 3, so the second term is 15, and the third term is 45. That makes the zeroth term, or the y-intercept, is 5 thirds. Divide by 3 to go up. So, a sub n is going to be 5 thirds times 3 to the n power. Boom!